Fati Allah ti Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and I'm the Allah jisr da'if wa miskeen wa zalim wa jahan. Amin but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence, alhamdulillah. Allah granted us to enter into this holy month of Milad al Nabi holy month of Rabbil Awwal and the immense reality with the birth of Sayyidina Muhammad and only those whom understand who's born can celebrate that birth and that Alhamdulillah the immensity of the one whom was born and the Muhammadan light and by virtue of its ishq and love and the immense reverence we understand how important the Milad al Nabi is and that Allah is a treasure wanting to be known. And so Alhamdulillah Allah when He loves a servant wants to guide the servant, then he guides them to being known. That's how the highest level of guidance explains itself. That every other guidance is of a lesser reality. But when Allah wants to truly guide towards Himself, then He'll guide the servant to revealing His reality of of where he has hidden his realities, in what direction of this creation these realities are hidden. And that's when Allah truly wants to guide the servant and grant them the gift of guidance, guides them to the reality and the love of Muhammadun Rasulullah And that's what we, we tried to convey last night, the importance of why there are people who say that we don't need that. We don't need to keep the reverence because if you, if you don't revere the one who was born, you don't find a necessity to celebrate his birth But when you understand that there's no way to find Allah, no way to understand Allah, no way to reach the perfection that our Creator Almighty is expecting. When everybody has their… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh preconceived notion of what is good and what is bad and what is correct and what is right. And this is a means of their worldly conditioning. Whatever they have been conditioned in life, that's how they see this world. And we've described it in different ways that if you wear blue glasses all the time, you look through this world in a hue of blue. And you swear to everyone, no this blue, no that's blue and that's blue. I said, no you're only wearing blue glasses and you see everything as blue. And Islam and the perfection of Islam is Allah knows that, that is reconfirmed in Hajj. Allah is giving for us the realities of Hajj is that they don't care. You're rich, you're poor, you're tall, you're short, you have, you don't have, you put two fabrics. So that all identification of your identity, your worldly status are to be removed. Because Allah is again confirming, when you come to me don't come with yourself. So it means then when you remove your worldly status and you don 
these two pieces of fabric that are unstitched and you're coming for your pilgrimage means you're coming for the call of Allah all that you have with you is what your heart has brought and your character. Your medallions are hidden to the world but the medallions in which Allah is looking for is not whether your suit is, is silk and that your, your jewelry is of the top brand and top name. But Allah is looking for the medallions that we should have achieved on our soul. The people of zikr, the people of uh, jummah, the people of tazkiyah and cleaning and purification which Allah throughout describes that they're going to wear the best of their uniforms for jummah. The best of uniform for jummah is if you did zikr on Thursday night. All the medallions would be dressed upon the soul so that when they enter for holy jummah they're dressed from these lights, blessed from these lights. Means these are the lights that Allah is, is looking for, this is the rank Allah is looking for. And those whom are going for hajj with their bad characteristics and their wildness, many qisa awliya, many stories of awliyaullah that describe one I cannot remember exact… exactly but there was a servant who stood afar and watched the people making tawaf and he looked and said that, oh I wish I could meet Sayyidina Khidr and that I would ask for dua that something from all these people to, to reach their ranks and to reach their, their realities and something in, in reference to that example and a man standing next to him at that moment took a turban and put it onto his head and he looked and he saw the people were making tawaf, they're all like haywan, like animals. And then he looked again and he saw above them were like angelic beings and they were making real tawaf and all of these were like wild creatures and animals making tawaf. And the just of that is that, watch out for what you're asking because you're not seeing the reality of people's characters and everyone comes with their wildness and the beasty character of their reality thinking they have achieved something and the turuqs and the guides and the way is again reconfirming that all of those conditions and the conditioning of people have to be what we… what, what is the word when they describe to break something down, to disassemble people. Everybody coming like they're already built, this is who I am and they have to be reprogrammed and disassembled. That whatever your mom and dad told you, conditioned you and gave you as an example, most likely it's incorrect. And that Allah wants them reprogrammed, reconditioned and de destructed, bring, bring them piece by piece back down and re-instruct them or, or re-bring them back up with the Muhammadan characteristics. And then imagine seven billion people with seven billion different characteristics and that's why this world is like a jungle. And people coming for worshipness they still come with the same characteristics. So even you're seeing them around tawaf doesn't mean they reach their angelic reality, just means that the wildness is with them making tawaf. And the real identity of insan and their perfection is actually the angelic realm right above them in which their angelic realities are making tawaf at the Kaaba. And that's why we say in the majlis of zikr, it's not the zikr that's sitting on the carpet but the one right above them in which their reality is in the association and the diwan and awliya. As soon as these authorized assemblies begin, the real assembly is right above them in the world of light, like a layered dimension that they don't see but hovering right above. So deconstructing people 
is the responsibility of the shaykhs and the tariqah. That everybody's coming in with what they think they know and what they think they've been programmed or even more dangerous are the ones coming thinking they have an understanding of what Islamic character is. Because little bit of knowledge can cause a lot of harm. Actually that's why in the last days Islam would rise from the west. The sun would rise from the west is the hadith and many ulama have come to confirm that the sun is Islam and Prophet is denoting that one, the sun will actually rise when the, the global sphere breaks its pole. But more important is the spiritual, that the reality of Islam would rise from the west because the slate is white and clean. It doesn't have preconceived notions, it understands that, oh we have no culture and we know that we've been indoctrinated with incorrect belief, incorrect characters, incorrect understandings and those are the ones whom reach towards perfection fast in which their slate is like a white piece of paper and that Allah through these teachings and Prophet will begin to reconstruct the way that's necessary. And hence we understand why then so much destruction will come onto the earth. From the ashes of their ruins Allah will rebuild anew. Well, shaitan also uses that phrase that he's hoping to destroy and bring back his satanic kingdom. But his satanic kingdom is already running everything. Its reality is really for Allah is the pride and arrogance of mankind will be destroyed. And as a result of their destruction and brought down the rubble of their egoism, the rubble of what they think they know will be brought down, will be all collapsed. And all that will be standing is a humbled insan, one whom is humbled by the might and the majesty of Allah in which Allah will reconstruct them with a perfected characteristic, with a humble characteristics and with the, within the boundaries and the realities of a Divinely characteristic for Thy Kingdom come and Allah's will, God's will, will be done. And the Kingdom of God is, is of a might and majesty that requires a characteristic that is of a godly nature from the godly and heavenly kingdom. So that's why then the understanding of this Muhammadan light and Muhammadan ishq is immensely important. That those whom say, we don't need a guide and that we don't need to keep talking about the Prophet's example, it's incorrect. There's no way to understand Allah with seven billion different characteristics and seven billion different understandings because of your seven billion different conditions. And the only way Allah wants to be known is through the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah So it means the servant comes, breaks down their character, effaces their character. And that's why Allah and pray like this, talk like this, eat like this, act like this, wear like this whoosh like this, every single aspect of the Muhammadan way Allah wants to be carried out. And that's the perfection of Islam. All of that is by the character and the khuluq of Sayyidina Muhammad Without that you don't know what washing is, you don't know what praying is, you don't know the character and the characteristics is. It's the pinnacle and the piece that holds the whole puzzle together and that's the piece that shaitan says we don't need. Well you take that out and the shaitan is replacing with every false idol somebody else is a character. No, no, all of them are false idols and corrupt. The only uncorruptible one is the perfected one, the reality the one whom is the most praised in heavens and earth is Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why it's essential for our character, for our exact of what Allah wants from us. We pray that Allah on the, this blessed month make us to be of a Muhammadan character. 
for both men and women that what Prophet wanted from us, the character that he wanted from us, the, the discipline in which he wanted from us that our, is our direction and the focus in which we're moving. Doesn't mean we got there. But at least we have to understand what we're shooting for and which direction we're going for. So this is most important and that has to do with good characteristics and, and, and being an example. And tariqah is then the school of these mannerisms. They should be the highest example of that reality. Means that they don't complain, they don't argue, they don't backbite, they don't fight, they don't humiliate, they don't disgrace. These are all the tariqah teachings. The older you are, the more Allah is expecting that from you to exhibit tariqah teachings, to exhibit Muhammadan characteristics. So, means then tariqah is, is not something you brag about but is a responsibility. So it's not people have to brag about, I'm in this tariqah, that tariqah, uh, like they've given that example in other things. But it's a responsibility that Allah has guided us to these schools of manners and now we are responsible to uphold that way. So now we are in more responsibility, not less responsibility. So we pray that Allah give us an understanding of this responsibility. And they give us in our heart a way in which to conduct ourselves so that Prophet to be happy with us. And everybody, and this is a, always a reminder for myself, is that we put post-it notes. Don't let shaitan fool you day after day after day, otherwise you're categorized as insane, insane in your head. We gave the example, when you're insane then they say, this person doesn't know, has no head is never going to graduate from the insane house. The one whom is not insane is that one day wakes up and says, no I actually want to change myself. I'm not going to complain, I'm not going to fight, I'm not going to be angry, I'm not going to exhibit all these horrible characteristics. I want to be an example of this Muhammadan love and Muhammadan ishq. Otherwise you just remain the one who crosses the street every day, same place and gets hit every day by the same car. And that's insane, that's somebody who's not well and never graduates. We pray that the mawlid brings a light within the heart for people to rise up. Rise up before the time is too late and too difficult and the bad characteristics be a means in which leads to one's destruction. The bad characteristics take away the protection and take away the light and the barakah and the blessings of Allah And that's why the turuqs come to teach the manners, good characteristics so that they can be under barakah in their life, under an umbrella of protection in their life and they remain blessed while the world is on fire. They fear not for they know their Lord is with them. Because they have all these du'as, although I walk through the valley of death I fear not for I know Allah is with me, my Lord is with me. Who can say that? With the yaqeen and certainty that Allah loves them, Allah with them, Allah's rida and satisfied with them. But the one whom has, who can say that? You think it's the one who prayed a lot and made sure that the Ramadans were, were extra great and that they fast excessively? or the one who knows they have good character. The only one who can truly say that in their heart is the one who has good character. Because in their good character they understood that, no they were kind to people. Where I fell short in my worshipness Ya Rabbi, in my heart I tried my best to be kind to people. So of course Allah will be kind to me. That whatever I did, I did out of kindness, whatever I did, I did out of generosity. I did out of my character, not my ibadah, not my worshipness. Based on my good character I, I rest my back in my life. Not based on my salah, oh I pray, I know I pray good, I know I pray good, God forbid Allah want to judge you on that and you're wrong. But if we don't have any character or good character, no of course you, you're, you're going to have a lot of fear in life. 
that exactly how much do you think you're protected if your character is bad. So this is uh, the, the secrets of tariqah and Prophet described, there are servants of Allah whom their khuluq and their character is exceptional, their amal is a bit weak but Allah forgives them. Means that's an immense secret of tariqah is that with good character Allah will inspire the servant. With beatific good character Allah will create an angel to complete their worshipness and their ibadah. And this from Shaykh Daghestani's teachings that when Allah loves the character, doesn't want that character to be raised in a position of humiliation, immediately brings an angel into existence that lives and worships 120 or 135 years in perfect worshipness. And the action and amal of that angel will be given to that servant as a gift. Allah can do anything. But what Allah will respond to is good character inshaAllah. So that's why the turuqs come to teach, have good character. That's the only thing that's going to save us from these days of difficulty. Bad character and, and the loads of actions but with bad character, you know if you put one rotten apple into a bag it makes the entire batch of apples to be rotten. So you can have a bag of what you think are good deeds but if your character is a rotten apple, you put it in it'll make the whole bag to be rotten, make it all to be spoiled. So we pray that Allah inspire us to understand that we, we, we lean our back as a support on good character, kindness, humbleness and so that Allah dress for us is rida and satisfaction. Subhanahu wa bihi rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.